Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about Alzheimer's disease because this is a big topic. How many of you have parents and you've seen things where, where you're a little, becoming a little more concerned because their memory is starting to slip or maybe their, their mind's not quite as sharp as it was? And how many of you are, you know, are the parents, are the grandparents that you, you notice that yourself? And how many of you ever want to be a burden for your other family members? So this is one of those things I see clinically all the time where people are under tremendous stress because they're having to care for an elderly relative who's got Alzheimer's or dementia. And if you're that person, I want you to pay really, really close attention because from what we understand, that Alzheimer's is largely preventable. It is largely a disease of lifestyle and choice. It is not a genetic disorder. And I'm, what I'm about to show you is gonna provide you with clear evidence to help hopefully impact people in your family. But you can see here, physical exercise, cerebrospinal fluid clearance is essential for maintaining a healthy brain and cognition by removal of metabolic waste from the central nervous system. So how does your brain and spinal cord, how do they detox? Because they have a fluid around them called cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, okay? Movement is how that happens. As you move, as you walk, your, you, you have a, your tailbone has eight holes in it and, it and nerves enter into those holes. And as you walk, your tailbone has this circular kind of figure eight motion that is tugging at those nerves and that tugging action is a physical action that pumps cerebrospinal fluid around your spinal cord and brain. And motion's required for that. Just like your cartilage doesn't have a blood supply and can't get nourishment without movement, your CSF can't clean itself. Your brain and your central nervous system can't detox the, the burden of normal metabolism without motion and movement. And that's what this is saying. So in this results, we show that there are two intrinsic CFF, CSF egress pathways of the dura mater and the lower parasigital dura. The adults with an active lifestyle had greater intrinsic CSF outflow. In other words, they were cleaning their brain better. They were cleaning, um, cleaning the toxins out of their brain than adults with more sedentary lifestyle. However, after increased physical activity, the sedentary group showed improved CSF outflow metrics the improvement was particularly notable at the lower parasagittal dura. So it's not too late is my point. If you are finding your mind slipping, you better find yourself a way to start building some lean muscle mass through activity. Alzheimer's disease is the most prevalent neurodegenerative disorder in the world, currently affecting 50 million people and projected to exceed 152 million by 2050. Here in the US, 10% of those age 65 and older have Alzheimer's disease. Clearance of waste products from the brain, such as amyloid beta or beta amyloid plaques, was previously thought to occur primarily through the blood-brain barrier transport. In the last decade, the paravascular pathway of metabolic waste clearance, also known as the glymphatic pathway, this is part of your lymphatic system, has been extensively studied. These studies conducted show the glymphatic system is responsible for the clearance of beta amyloid and its waste products to a greater degree than the blood-brain barrier. And this pathway, this glymphatic pathway, is accelerated and enhanced through exercise. No drug. You think you look at the drugs they're using to treat Alzheimer's. They don't work. I mean, the outcomes are terrible. People are still developing dementia. Exercise, motion, movement, build lean mass. Exercise suppresses neuroinflammation for alleviating Alzheimer's disease. This is another research review. Neuroinflammation in AD is characterized by long-term activation of pro-inflammatory microglia. In this review, we systemically summarized and scored out that exercise ameliorates Alzheimer's disease by directly and indirectly regulating immune response of the central nervous system and promoting hippocampal neurogenesis to provide a new direction for exploring. Uh, basically, it helps to build new neurons and it suppresses inflammatory uh, chemicals from degradating or destroying the brain. If you want a visual of that, here, here's one. You can see here exercise effects. So exercise in stimulates that chemical BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This 
chemical passes through the blood-brain barrier, it stimulates the production of new nerves, which aid in cognitive recovery, and it has an anti-inflammatory effect. So what do we get? We get an increase in M2 microglial polarization, which helps clean the brain. We get healthy neurons, and we get a reduction of inflammation. Now, in Alzheimer's disease, we have a disrupted blood-brain barrier, so the blood-brain barrier is leaking, just like you can get a leaky gut, you can have a leaky brain. You have all kinds of chemicals leaking into the brain that are leading to increased damage or neuroinflammation, right? And so these are the mechanisms. These are the mechanisms that exercise treats. If I was going to design a drug that could effectively treat Alzheimer's disease, I would want to affect these three areas. Exercise does, and it's a free drug. So, you know, there aren't any excuses. You just have to use this medicine. This exercise is medicine. Exercise modulates neuroinflammatory responses to ameliorate Alzheimer's disease. First, exercise suppresses inflammation in the body through reducing circulating levels of inflammatory factors in immune cells. Second, exercise restores permeability and integrity of the blood-brain barrier. So it improves the blood-brain barrier's um, ability to keep bad things out. Um, third, exercise inhibits pro-inflammatory M1 phenotype and stimulates anti-inflammatory M2 phenotype. So again, it switches the type of immune cells that are being activated in the brain that regulate inflammation. And finally, exercise triggers adult hippocampal neurogenesis, so it aids in the production of new nerve cells. You can't beat that. There's not one, like I said, there's not a single medication in the world that can even come close to matching exercise as a mechanism. So here's another kind of visual. So exercise, what does it do? Improves hormonal response, increases cerebral blood flow, reduces oxidative stress, increases nerve, uh, nerve, uh, new nerve cells being produced or neurogenesis, improves neurotransmission, so it helps brain cells communicate at a more fa uh, rapid fire rate, it increases neurotrophic factors. Neurotrophic factors are just things that help new nerve cells be produced and be healed. And it also has psychological benefits um, as well uh, on mood and on, and on how we think and how we feel, as I showed you earlier. Promoting changes in lifestyle and pre-symptomatic and pre-dementia disease stages may have the potential for delaying one-third of dementias worldwide. What did we say a minute ago about Alzheimer's? We said there's 50 million. Now, cut that by one-third if you add exercise. That's what this author or this paper is saying. Um, I just know that when I have patients in my office that come to me and they're taking care of their parents who are Alzheimer's, it's one of the most stressful things in the world is to take care of somebody who can't take care of themselves. And I would just encourage any of you who are wanting Alzheimer's prevention, think about this now because if you wait too late and your mind is gone, now you become a burden to your family you become a burden to those around you. Um, and I know you don't want that. None of us want to be a burden to the people that we care about the most and love the most. So take care of yourself. It's up to you, you know, because if you're stubborn and you don't want to do these things, you're going to be a burden for somebody. It's, it, the disease is on the rise. It's just far too common. Now, here's some research studies in humans on exercise. And so I want to show you, just kind of blow up here on this table. Look at the ages in these different studies. Average age, 70.6, 73. Ages between 65 and 75. Average age, 65.72, 67 plus or minus five years. 70 to 89. Average age is 68. Average age, 78. So you don't have to be a spring chicken. You don't have to be 30. You don't have to be 20 to reap the benefits of exercise. You can start, you know, 60s and above. And what did we find? Different types of exercise, moderate to high intensity aerobic, aerobic and resistance training, just habitual physical activity. The duration of these studies, anywhere from, you know, from 16 weeks down to one week. But what, what's the general trend? It's three times a week. Uh, the lowest one here was twice a week. But even at twice a week, what did we see? Improvements in cognitive function, improvements in spatial judgment, um, improvements in self-awareness improvements in cognitive function, improvement in cognitive function, improvement in quality of life. All these chemicals you see here, these are all inflammatory mediators that are improving as a result of activity. So go get a gym membership, go buy some equipment at Academy or some local health, uh, store where you can you know, exercise at home if you don't like to go to the gym. Um, 
go play pickleball, whatever you need to do, whatever it is you like that's going to give you physical activity and help you be, build lean muscle, go get to it.